Y'all ever hear about the plantation owner who kept a diary of all the essays that he did against his slaves? And it was published into a book. And now the land that he did all of this on is haunted as hell. F the popcorn, get your handy. Hi, my name is Noah. I'm a spooky spiritualist. And on my page, I talk about death, spiritual reparations, haunted people, places, and things, and how you can fuck around and find out. If you're not following me, go ahead and follow me now. Y'all really lucky that I love y'all because some of these stories are low vibrational. I have to take spirit baths after I recite them. On today's episode of This is the Scum of the Fucking Earth, we have Thomas Thistlewood. He's listed as a diarist on Google, but I'm gonna go ahead and rename him a serial rapist. He was born March 16, 1721 in Lincolnshire in Great Britain. He migrated from Britain over to Jamaica where he was an overseer at a plantation called Egypt. And this is where he decided he was going to become the world's biggest rapist. He also started to keep a diary of everything that he was doing in Jamaica. This diary had over 14,000 entries and spanned over about three or four decades. Within days of him arriving to the sugar plantation to take over as the overseer, he began to essay women. That's not all he did, that was just his favorite activity. Sometimes essaying more than one woman in one night. And women who ran or declined or fought were punished severely. They were whipped, lynched, flogged, or put in chain gangs. Sometimes he even threw them out into the barn with the horses, pigs, cows, or whichever. Thomas Thistlewood was the worst of the worst. As if the grapings weren't terrible enough. He loved to make an example out of his slaves. He once received as a gift a runaway slave's head and put it on a stick in front of his house. He invented his own torture methods. The most popular one being the Derby Dose, which included him flogging a slave until the skin broke rubbing lime juice in the womb and then making another fellow slave defecate in the runaway slaves or the slave that was being punished mouth. He eventually acquired his own slaves who he rented out to other plantation owners. All of his slaves were branded with the initials TT to let other plantation owners in the area know that they were his slaves. In 1767, he finally acquired his own plantation. It was 160 acres, and he called it Bretna Island Pen. He had 34 slaves, 9 were men, 12 were women, and 13 were underaged. But T is, is that his slaves were practicing African traditional religions and was fucking him up, low-key. He was normally becoming infected with syphilis, And even though he was essaying everything that moved in his plantation, there was no report in his diary of any of his slaves catching it. I mean, he had syphilis so bad for chunks out of his like journey, he wasn't even writing because he was too sick. All his crops were ruined by a hurricane in 1780. And the hurricane also ruined his house, destroyed it. And to be honest, I really think this was coming from his self-proclaimed wife. His wife, and I use that word loosely, y'all, was a slave he called Phoebe, who was forced to war his child, who he named Mulatto John. Because the more frequently he became ill with syphilis, the more his sexual health declined and he wasn't able to abuse his slaves. (laughs) But that didn't stop him from being a horrible, terrible person. His slaves were very underweight and malnutritioned, even for this time. But today, the land is said to be haunted, as hell. People that visit the land where this plantation sat report seeing full apparitions. And rumor has it that His soul was damned to this place for all eternity. I pray that this dirty colonizer got the ending that he deserved, which I'm sure of it. 
Because spirit don't lie and it don't forget. And this is your friendly reminder to do good and be good.